Welcome to my messy workbench. I wanted to show you how I'm going to have this ultrasonic Mr. Smoke Unit installed in my Bachman uh, 2 truck Shea. So this is just a high level showing you all the components and how I have it wired together um, before I shove it into the boiler there. I'm also going to be shortening some of these wires and trying to compact this as much as possible. So first off we have this which is a 3D printed reservoir I made. I coated it with some waterproofing material to make sure it doesn't leak. Here's the ultrasonic mister head, the device itself, connected to the board. These come as a unit. You buy them, they're like less than three dollars, and you push this button to turn it on. Um, however, I see that little white U-shaped loop there. I did that so that I could short the button out. By that I mean I don't need to push the button, so as soon as this receives power, this jumps the gap and it auto powers it on in about a second after it receives power. Um, similarly, I didn't want to have to use a USB plug to connect everything, so I wired the power source, the power coming from the locomotive, into the board, goes in directly there. This thing allows it to automatically start and then it sends the signal up to the mystery unit and it activates. This is a voltage step down converter. Um, with a little dial. You see this little, little thing right there? That's a dial you can turn with a small flathead and you can adjust the output voltage. I have this set to about five volts and that seems to be optimal. You can go as low as three, um, but when you do, it's not putting out as much mist up here. So that's what that is. And this is pretty basic. It says right here on the back, like voltage goes in, there's negative and positive and voltage goes out, positive and negative, pretty basic. Now this guy is a bridge rectifier. What this does is it takes whatever the voltage coming in and it makes it positive and negative con consistently. The reason for that is with these DC locomotives running on track power, depending on if you're going forward or reverse or one direction or another, the power might be positive and negative or flipped. And so this can't accept negative and positive on the opposite terminals. So this make sure that the power going through all the system from this point on is the same. Um, so that's what that is. So if I took this power lead and reverse it and plugged it in, it won't affect anything else. Everything will still work fine. This is critical if you want the system to work properly in both directions. This is just a temporary connector I have plugged into the old smoke uh, wires. So this used to be the two, the white and the black or the white and the dark gray here. This used to be connected to the old smoke unit. I now have it just connected to the bridge rectifier, which then provides voltage to the voltage step down regulator, which then puts the five volt voltage to this board here, which then gives the signal to the mister head to spray. So with that said, let me try to apply power. So this is a 6S battery, but it's lower on voltage. So it's only a 23 and a half volts is what this battery provides. So if I provide power to the wheels, which is really hard to do one handed, but we'll see if I can. There we go, better connection now. And then if I take power off, there it goes. So obviously that was at full running speed. This thing will never probably be going that fast since it's a Shea. Um, but even at lower voltages, I tested it with a battery that was half the capacity and this still worked fine. Um, so now what I need to do is reduce the complexity here and try to get it all shoved into the back of the boiler successfully. I do want to warn people that way in the back, it's hard to see, there's weights back there and you can kind of see it and those are metallic so you want to make sure you insulate all of this stuff properly so that none of the exposed metal connectors touch that metal and short the system out here's the only thing i'm not in love with my design is i can't find a good way to get water in here other than taking the uh, boiler smoke door off and then i have this lip here and i'm using a syringe to inject water into this reservoir. Um, 
The problem is if you feed it from the top, that little disc that represents the mister will block a lot of the water from flowing in. You can fill it that way. I did put holes up there so it could trickle in, but you won't be able to fill it fast. So this is, in my opinion, one of the better ways. Either use a hose or a funnel or a syringe like this and just inject water directly into there. If somebody has a better idea, I'd love to hear it. Well, giving her her first test on the tracks, and you can see it's working. Get in the sun here. There you go. And let's try the other direction. There it is. And you notice it stopped there. Reason why is water collected inside of the funnel and dropped back onto the top of that disc. And when water's on top of the disc, it doesn't work. So it has to clear that water and then it starts again. It's been running for over 30 minutes now and still going strong. I was able to minimize the blockages by, I well, I was looking at the mister and noticed it was like just a little bit forward of dead center. So I tweaked it a little bit to try and get it more in the very center of the stack and that helped a lot. Not saying that'll work for every smokestack style, but on this one, it's working pretty good. Let's talk about this reservoir. So this is something I 3D printed and it's made to basically fit perfectly in the boiler or the smoke box area of the Shea. And then what you can do is you can take the disc, this one's a broken disc I, I had from testing purposes. And again, hard to do one-handed, but if you put it in there, you'll see these, this groove. You can just push this in and 3D printed tolerances vary. So like my other one was fine. This one's a little tight. I might need to heat it up a bit. But in theory, I could push this disc all the way in so it's seated perfectly above that hole. Um, so, you know, if you 3D print this on your own, just know that you may need to make it a fraction, you know, a slightly larger, maybe enlarge it by 1% or something. But this disc will slide into this groove here, this slot and hold in place. Um, what you need to do is the disc, though, needs this um, wick to suck water up to provide to go to the bottom of this disc, and that way it can vaporize it. So that's pretty easy. That's what this hole is for. You just put this in here, push it all the way down so it's all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. I would make a little mark right there, take the wick out, take a pair of scissors, and then cut it. I, if it were me, I would do it where there's about an eighth of an inch left of the wick. I don't cut it too short. You'd rather have too much wick and have to force it down so it's in compression than not enough. So that's the one thing I'll say is when you cut this, make sure you have a little extra, just a little bit, so that when you push this disc in place, the wick is pushing up on the bottom side of that disc. Um, you don't want it falling loose or not making contact with the disc. Um, so that said, once you get all that installed, you know, I'll just take my door off here. That has my other unit installed already. Um, you want to make sure, the key thing is when you install this guy, you want to make sure that disc head is right in the dead center of your exhaust stack there. Dead center. Um, you saw in the video I was playing just a moment ago that you, know, if water drips back down in here and covers the top of this mister for about 10 to 20 seconds, it won't smoke or anything because it's trying to clear that water from the top of it. Um, I, when I was running it, I, I took the stack off like it is here and I ran it and I was paying very close attention. Like I'd get down like this at an angle and see where that steam was coming up. You know, was it like 
dead center? Was it a little forward, a little backwards? Um, same with this angle. Was it left or right, one way or the other? And I played with it and played with it until I got it as centered as possible. And then I put the stack back on and I ran it for a solid 25 minutes without a single um, stall um, where, where it stopped smoking. Um, whereas beforehand, every like minute and a half or so, it might stop for 10 seconds and need to be cleared. So that just goes to show how important it is to try and get this dead center. Now what I'm going to do, so you can see this is the... the original Bachman part here. And so there's that opening there, but then you have this wall that's eating up. So really you only have a couple millimeters of exhaust. It's not that big. I, I took this and I measured it. I'm going to try to resin 3d print a new stack without the uh, grill on top, the spark catcher, um, and a much thinner wall. Um, that means it'll be a little less durable if somebody knocked it, but you know, I'm not knocking my trains over very frequently and that will give it more of an outlet, um, to get out of the stack and less chance of it collecting, um, precipitation that that'll sit on top of the disc. So just to recap, make sure this is as centered as possible. And what I did is I used hot glue. So, you know, I helped, I, <clears throat> pardon me, I held this where I wanted it. I'm like, okay, that's where it needs to be. I put some hot glue down. I waited about 10, 20 seconds until that glue solidified, and that's it. I let go, and that still, you know, hot glue is sort of flexible, so you can still move it a little bit, like a millimeter here or there if you need to, but make sure that is extremely critical that you make sure this is right dead center with the exhaust stack. Let's take a look at this voltage uh, step-down board. So I'll post a link of how to how and where to get these guys, but you can see it's really basic. On the back side, it's got line in, negative and positive, line out, positive and negative. And you can see on mine, I'm using red as the positive, black as the negative. Shows the direction, so your original voltage comes in from this side over here. And then there's this dial you can adjust to find out how much voltage it's outputting. So I have noticed that you see that flat edge on the bottom that's close to the chip that says 100. I have noticed that on two of these I tested and they both had about the same voltage when you put it right at that angle. It was about at 5 volts. So I'm not promising <laughs> that'll work for you. But it may be a good place to start. Now, how do you know for sure how much voltage it's putting out? Because if it's 10 volts, you're going to fry that mister board. Um, well, what I did is I hooked it up to a battery. So I had this battery, which I checked it with a multimeter. I tapped it, and it was like 23 and a half volts. Okay. Um, I plugged it into this. And you don't need to worry about the bridge rectifier as long as you're doing positive to positive, negative to negative for testing purposes. I then put my multimeter, attached it to the leads here, and then I just turn that dial. And you can test it, you can see on the multimeter, the voltage go up and down, up and down. And that's how I found out exactly what voltage I needed. The last component to review is this, the bridge rectifier. So you'll notice on this guy, there's a plus and a minus, and then there's two squiggle lines on the left and right. And there's four pins. Now what that's representing is the squiggle lines represent the inputs. So where the wires came out of the smoke uh, for the smoke unit, you would solder one of those to the left, one of those to the right. And then the plus and minus pins that are coming out here, the longer one and the shorter one, those represent the voltage leaving the rectifier going to the rest of your system. So in this case, the long pin on the top is positive. The shorter pin on the bottom where my thumb is, that's negative. And so I bent these pins out so you can see. So those bent out pins would be the connections from the locomotive. The two straight pins here, sorry about the focus. Those pins, just dropped it, but it doesn't matter. Those pins, the positive and negative, go to this board. Which again, if you turn it over, it shows... Input positive, input negative. So you want to make sure that positive lead goes to that 
solder pad up here and the negative one goes down to by the one by my thumb. And then the wires leave that board and go to the ultrasonic mister, make sure, making sure positive and negative go to the right locations. So another option I'm just experimenting with right now is if you have a funnel or a smokestack that's large enough, you can try to put the mister head directly into the funnel as long as the wick is tall enough to reach up to like right about, well in this case right about here where the mister head is. So as long as your wick is high enough, you can try this method. This method has the benefit of if water um, collects inside of here, it probably will drain down the side and avoid the mister. In this case, the mister head is like right at the bottom of the funnel. Um, but if I had a wick that was an extra half inch longer, it would be floating above the funnel bottom, allowing water to seep back down instead of catching on top of the mister head itself. So. That's another option. This is a little more difficult in that you have to feed the wire and the wick and all that through the funnel, through the chimney, before you slide the water tank in and uh, all that. So it takes a little more effort. Um, obviously, if you want to interchange smokestacks, this might not work with a narrow chimney stack. This only is gonna work with a diamond style or an onion stack or something similar. Um, but there is a benefit, like I said, by doing this, it gets the smoke pushing out closer to the top, and it also prevents, or could prevent, if this was a little taller than it is in my example, could prevent water from collecting on top of the disc head. So that is an alternative method you can experiment with. <laughs> 